Good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing this morning? Hey, can we stand up? We're going to get ready to worship. And I just want to welcome everyone today. Today is Gathering Sunday, so do not leave. Like right after service, we have tacos out this door. We're going to open up the roll-up doors. We're going to have tacos, and it's just asking donations. And every dollar raised is going to go to blessed families for this Christmas. So it's all about fellowship. So let's just hang out after service, and let's just love on one another. Because that's what Jesus is, right? Jesus is love. They'll know the way we love one another is just like... Do they want what you have, my brothers and my sisters, when they see you? I'm going to tell every single one of you guys right now, the most boringest thing on planet Earth, in my opinion, is religion. Is religion. So when we come here and we worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that's the reason why we come. That's the reason why we gather, to lift up the name that is above every name. Oh, let me read this passage to you guys. I'm just getting ready. I'm going to speak today, so Holy Spirit, just... uh. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2 and 3 says, If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Father God, Holy Spirit, I just thank you, Father, that you are love, Father. You were the greatest sacrifice, Father. You poured out your love your, for us, Father, your blood, Father. God. I just thank you, Father, because of that blood, we could freely worship you and honor you, my Father. So again, we acknowledge your presence that you are here, Father. God. We just thank you, Father, what you can do. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. May you anoint every single one of us with your words, with your worship, Father. God. Holy Spirit, I just thank you, Father. The way that we came in, we're not going to leave the same, all because we're going to have an encounter with you, Jesus. So we just love and we praise you in Jesus. To every sin, Amen. Let's worship. Let's worship. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm, but I won't go down I hear your voice carrying the rhythm of the wind So I wouldn't drown You've never been closer than you are right now Cause you are Kyra You are enough Kyra You are enough So I will be content In every circumstance
I think we have the words back there. So just saying, I think it's not a building. It's not a building you want to fill. It's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill. It's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill. It's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill. It's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill. It's my heart, you can have it all. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not 
How many of you need a touch of heaven today, amen? Amen.
Amen. And before I forget, uh, we do open communion here during worship, uh, so feel free uh, to, to grab. You're probably going to want to grab right now. We're going to turn this whole place into a dance floor this morning. Amen? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to come up and, and uh, receive open communion, amen. back to the start where you found me I'm coming back to your heart now I surrender take me this is all I can bring here we go
Welcome to the Bridge Central Coast. Go ahead and give somebody a hug next to you and greet somebody you haven't met before, amen? Well, good morning, everyone. Hey, Jesus is in the house. Come on. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the same Jesus that you read about in the Bible is here right now here in this room with us. One of our members, uh, Willie, just came up. He said he had, a, he had a vision during the worship of the woman with the issue of blood. If you read about her in the Bible, it's Mark chapter five. It says she heard about Jesus and she had this blood disease that caused her to bleed all the time. And uh, she heard about him and so she said, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna go find Jesus. I know if I touch the hem of his garment, I'm gonna be made whole. And then he saw that there were people even here today that you have some kind of sickness or chronic situation that is related to your blood. Uh, it could be anything. It could be a lot of things. It could be related to even diabetes or affecting your kidneys or all, any of those things. And he saw that uh, they, they would reach out to Jesus. He would take him up on his lap and then, then they would be healed. And so we want to follow through on that because we, we believe in following the Holy Spirit here at the Bridge Church. And so if you're here this morning and you'd say, you know what, that's me. I've, I've got a, 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 you know, a, a, an ailment or sickness or disease that affects my, it's, affected, it's caused by my blood or something in my blood. Would you raise your hand real quick here right now? Okay, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat and come here and stand in the front. I'm going to ask some of our prayer team people to come on up here real quick, and we're going to pray for you. The Bible says that those who believe, how many believers do I have in the house? Okay. Come on up here right up in the front real quick. Those who believe, it says they, Jesus said this, those who believe, it says, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Come on. Come on, that's Jesus talking. That's not some preacher. That's not some religion. That's Jesus himself. And so we're going to pray. All of, you, all of you that are praying, just hold on for just one second here. All you guys that are praying, they can't hear me. That's all right. All right. It's working. Did you come up for prayer? These guys came up for prayer? All right. Okay, I want to pray. Uh, and if we can get some more people to come up and lay hands on some of these people here up front. Yeah, just come and lay hands on them. You know what? This is not about a religion. This is about a real God who does real miracles in people's lives. So, Father... We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command healing into these bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak healing into you right now. Health. The Bible says God's will is that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. The Bible says by Jesus' stripes you were healed. You are healed. We decree that. We declare that over your body right now in the name of Jesus as we lay our hands on you. You will recover. You will be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's begin to praise God. He's a healer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still heals today. He still saves today. He still sets people free today. Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just want to do one more thing before I hand the mic off to Abby. If you're, if you're struggling with any kind of sickness, 
No matter what level, if it's from a cold to something serious, just stand right where you are. I'm not gonna make you come up. But just stand up right where you are. We're gonna pray for you. If you need healing in your body, just stand up right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are here in this room. The healer is in the house. And Lord, we speak. Now, if you're near one of those people, reach out, put your hand on their shoulder. Reach out to them. Just, just put your hand on them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak healing and health health. We command healing into these bodies right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Touch them now with your power. We believe that you are a God of power. And so, Father, you're the one who created the whole universe. You created our bodies, and we speak health and healing in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for it. Come on, give them thanks for healing you, touching you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was powerful. Amen. Thank you, Willie, for being obedient to the Holy Spirit, right? Because we're following the Holy Spirit, right? Not a plan or agenda, right? Because it's not our ways or our plans. It's his plans. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Man, I don't know about you, but seeing all those young people on stage really encouraged and blessed me. These kids are a part of our youth ministry. And you know what's neat? It's wonderful that they're so talented. It's wonderful that they're so anointed. But I've actually met with some of these young people, and they love Jesus. They're passionate and on fire for Jesus, and I love it. I love to see a church that's not just about the people who are in, their, in certain age groups, but all the age groups, right? Jesus, he brought the children up to him even, didn't he? Amen. So exciting. God is raising up a youth army. Amen? Right? And a church where the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Right? Because we're not going to wait until they're at their deathbed to start really getting them on fire for the Lord. We're getting them young. Right? And we're grabbing them at a young age to show them they could, you know, they could spend their entire life serving Jesus. Right? There's a, there's a misconception out there that people have to sow their wild oats. They have to go through the rebellious season. That's not necessarily the truth, right? There's a lot of people in the Bible, like Samuel, whole life serving Jesus or serving God at that point, but serving God, amen? And that's what we want for our young people. No matter what age they're at, we want them to fall in love with God, amen? My name is Abby, and I'm gonna bring the offering exhortation to you this morning. Let's turn on our Bibles, right? Because we're a church that's based on the word of God. Can you turn with me to the New Testament, which is Matthew 19 this morning. Okay. Matthew 19, verse 16. All right. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but the one that is God. But if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false false witness or lie. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I've kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, Go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away very sorrowful for he had great possessions. And verse 23 said, and then Jesus said to his disciples, assuredly I say to you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than the rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, okay, let's listen up, folks. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Isn't this an interesting story? And maybe we could kind of detach ourselves. Well, I'm not a rich man, Abby. I don't have a castle and a summer house and all those things. But do you know in America... We are very wealthy compared to the rest of the world. We've got computers in our hands, right? 
Even people in our homeless situations are, are actually doing a lot better than people in other nations of the world, actually. So we're very wealthy in this nation, you know, and it's interesting. I, I love the story because he's like, which, which commandments should I keep, Jesus? <laughs> Isn't that an interesting question? Which ones, right? But Jesus, he, first he gave him the ones that he knew that he would be good at, but then he challenged him with the rest, right? God is so good that he meets us where we're at, and he asks us those questions that unlock the truth of where we're at. Amen? And so it's so important for us in this age of the church to recognize, are we functioning out of selective obedience? Right? Wait, you heard me right. Selective obedience. Right? Which of these words or commandments in here do I follow today? Right? Versus saying, no, no, no. All of the word I need to follow, right? And it is, like Jesus said, it's truly impossible for us to do on our own. But with God, all things are possible. Amen? So I encourage us this morning, as we're being challenged with God wanting us to grow and mature in his kingdom, that we are open. We are open to what he has to say to us right? It can be so easy to be, okay, God, I'm, I'm good at this. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. But when it's those areas of our life, right? We've all had them where it's like, okay, God, you can have all that, but not this, right? But that's not God, what God wants. He wants all of us, right? This young man, he had the p- potential to be a disciple of Jesus, but that was his point where he's like, oh, sorry, God. I, can't. I mean, he literally had Jesus in front of him. Isn't that astounding? Right? God speaks to us, and we don't necessarily have him in the flesh right there going, okay, this is what I want you to do. But even then, what he had in his bank account or in his house was way too important than what God had for him. Amen? And so we got to really recognize, what are we building our foundation on? Are we building our foundation on the kingdoms of this world? Right? Are we building our foundation on God's kingdom? Because his kingdom is the kingdom that will remain right? This kingdom's going to pass away. The things of this earth, they're going to be resting and destroyed. But God's kingdom is eternal. And so we want to build our life on eternal things. Amen. We want to build our life on God's things, not like pastor says all the time, not good things, but the God thing. And so we, we need to be challenged. We should be regularly being challenged as Christians. Did you know that? Not just with bad things in our life, but areas where we're having to say, okay, God, I surrender. You're right, I'm wrong, right? That's becoming a mature Christian because any of us can just give God the things we like to give him. But when it comes down to giving him the hard things, those things that we really, really like, we really, really love, that's when we grow and mature in him, amen? And that can look like all sorts of things, not just financial riches, amen? We can put relationships before God. We can put sports and activities before God, right? There's another word for that. It's called idolatry, right? And none of us are exempt from experiencing that temptation, right? Because when we look at things and we meditate on things and we put all our finances and our energy and our time into that, that can very easily become an idol, even if it's a good thing. But we don't want any idols before our God, amen? We don't want anything to come before him because the reward that he has set before us for our obedience is far greater than that little thing we thought is such a big deal. So we really need to understand and ask God for his help to not have selective obedience, but 100% obedience, amen? So I encourage us today as we give, whether we give through our finances today, whether we give through our our time, where we obey him when he tells us to do something that's really uncomfortable, that we say, yes, Lord, I'm your servant and I'm listening and I'm gonna obey, amen. I love this real quick story. There's a guy and uh, he was in a grocery store and he was uh, checking out the checkout line and he felt like the Lord said, I want you to go by that pop machine and I want you to stand on your head. Okay, Lord, did I eat something weird? I don't know. And so he's like, no, 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 no. God wouldn't speak that to me. That's weird. 
So he keeps on going and it keeps on getting on him and keeps on getting on him. And he even gets to the point where he leaves and goes to the parking lot. No, I'm not going to do that. I, I won't do it. But he couldn't. He couldn't get in his car. It was so strong. So he went back. He's like, fine. I'm going to look like an idiot, but I'm going to stand on my head. So he goes over, stands on his head, and then basically finishes. He's like, okay, God, there you go. And this person runs up to him and said, I can't believe you did that right now. I was just praying and saying, God, if you're so real, would you have someone stand on their head in front of that vending machine? And yes, he got saved that day, right? What God doesn't always ask us to do these amazing whatevers. Sometimes it's kind of silly or weird. But you know what? If it's a sake for somebody getting saved and encountering him in a real way, isn't it worth it to experience a little bit of humiliation? Yes. Right? Because that guy's eternity was transformed by this one guy being willing to be humble and silly. So I encourage us today. Let's listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray for our offering this morning. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are so good. And Lord, we just pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us with this area of obedience to you. Lord, no matter what that means, God, Lord, we think with, with you, nothing is impossible. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, into our circumstances, into those areas that we don't want to let go of. And we ask for your help, Lord God, to surrender those things to you. Well, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. We have um, an amazing ministry with us today called Pathways Fostering Agency. We truly believe as the church, we should be a part of helping people. Amen. Is that true? Is that good? And especially children, right? They're very vulnerable. We have a ton of kids in foster care in our foster care system. And we believe the church is not supposed to be just on the outside, but we're supposed to be participants in those types of ministries. Because, um, you know, truly, and I'll just take one second here. I believe that foster care is one of the uh, amazing representations of Jesus Christ, right? You're, you have someone else's child coming into your home with no guarantee, of how long you have them, any of that, but you love them and serve them, right? And they're being plucked out of a system where sometimes they'll have a good experience, but a lot of times not. And you give them safety and you give them protection and you put deposits in their life that would be internal. That is huge, right? And I think that's the heart of Jesus 100%. So we're gonna allow Mr. Dave to share with us what his ministry does, amen? I really appreciate it. It's so exciting to be here this morning. Uh, it's one of the great privileges that I have working for Pathway Family Services to be able to talk to groups like you and, and uh, tell you about foster care and to tell you about us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm glad to be here growing in this, in this wonderful, wonderful church. That, and uh, It's a church with leadership, by the way, I know is very familiar with foster care, some, some, and I know there are people in the church who have been or are involved in foster care in one way or another. Also, I have a little bit of a connection with this church in that four years ago, the first time I ever did a presentation uh, for, for Pathway was at Hope Community Church. Just so you guys are, some of you might have been there. I don't know. Uh, so I know well, the Holy, I really feel that the Holy Spirit spoke to me in writing down what I did today because I usually don't write anything down. I, <laughs> the other day I, I, I just sat down and I said, I've got to write this down. And, and I just knew it was the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to your hearts just as, as he is to mine. And the time is now to step out in faith and spread the seeds of the gospel with great urgency. Pathway Family Services exists to demonstrate God's unconditional love to be the planter of seeds of the gospel in the hearts of young people who have been traumatized in their young lives, often neglected or abused, and now in desperate need of a demonstration of God's unconditional love. 
when I was growing up in the, in the 70s, I was an active Christian as a youth. And you, you mentioned that. Um, I heard it my whole adult life, my whole life, that there's no such thing as a second generation Christian. And that is true. What is that meant is everybody has to make their own decision. Everybody has to become uh, a Christian on their own. You can't be generational. It was meant as a rallying cry to get mature Christians to disciple the next generation so the church would grow and get stronger. Generally speaking, though, I'm afraid that the church in general, I'm speaking overall in the United States, is not as strong as it was probably in the 1970s. So that means we didn't listen to that. And we weren't listening to God. And we weren't doing what God wanted us to do. Maybe we were too complacent. But today, right here, right now, know who God is and what God wants. And we are ready. And are we ready? I'm sorry. That's the problem with reading something. Are we ready to look into what it will take to be in mission to children and youth right here in Santa Maria? In other words, are you willing to help children who have already experienced horrible trauma in their lives? They've experienced neglect, abuse, abandonment. Are you ready to love God and love others by taking that calling to heart it's certainly clear in the Bible that we are to be helpers of the oppressed, especially the widows and orphans of our world. James 127, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And Jesus said in Mark 2:17, it's not those who are well who need a doctor, but those who are sick. I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. So, I'm looking forward to telling you about Pathway. Pathway is a, is a Christian organization, obviously. Uh, it was formed in 2006 in uh, Bakersfield. We have an office there and an office here. Most of our work uh, is in Santa Barbara County. We do have a, a couple of small offices in, in uh, Southern California as well. But I want to tell you about it. And if there's no time or if for some reason I'm talking to somebody else and you don't have a chance to talk to me about it, there are some sign-up sheets out there. I'd love you to sign your name and give your phone number so that we can call you and talk to you about foster care. To be a resource parent, all you need really is to love God, to have a spare bedroom, a clean or almost clean uh, criminal background, um, a heart for serving and loving children and youth, be healthy enough for the task, and have the ability to do this without relying on any reimbursements as actual income. Although we do reimburse. As a, uh, now let me share with you afterwards at the table I have out there the entire process. And there's some papers and various things we can give you, as well as some prayer cards so I really appreciate, again, you allowing me this time. Uh, will you pray with me? Lord, we praise your name. We thank you so much for your spirit working in our lives. And we ask, Lord, that you, you move in the hearts of those who wish to, to serve and to find a way to serve to help these kids who are uh, in so much need of your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much, Dave. Let's have Pastor Carmelo come on up. Let's extend our hands to our Pastor Carmelo, amen. Lord God, we thank you for Pastor Carmelo, and we thank you for the fire that he always brings every time he shares. And Lord, I thank you that you even showed me this morning, Lord God, how in the past he was involved with gang activity, and now he's involved with God activity. Lord God, and where he experienced a level of authority in that season, there is a greater measure of authority in this season with young people. And I thank you where he had a few following. Now he's going to have many, many, many following him. And so we bless the word of the Lord in and through him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. 
All righty, guys, again, I'm a words guy, so this is what I say every time I come up here and preach. Get in your guys' word so the word could get in you. If, it's a choice. If you guys don't get in your guys' word, the word is not gonna get in you. So get in the word so the word gets in you. I'm gonna turn to you guys uh, to 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. If you guys didn't wake, you guys better wake up in Jesus' name. Let's go. Uh, first, I'm a youth pastor, so I gotta, you know, you guys gotta be awake. Let's go. First John chapter four, seven, eight says, dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Verse eight, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Let's pray. Father God, Holy Spirit, I just thank you, Father God, for your word, Father God. I just thank you, Father God, again, this is not my word, Father God. This is your word, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. May you soften people's hearts right now, Father God, for they could receive your word, Father God. I just thank you, Father God. The way that we came in, again, we're not going to walk out the same, all because we had an encounter with you, Jesus, Father God. So we just love and praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 So the title of this message that I'm giving is, This is Love. This is Love. Man, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I had a whole nother passage, a whole nother sermon prep, and it was going to be so, I mean, in my heart, I was like, man, it's going to be so good. I was going to be preaching on the word affliction. Affliction. Man, I had it pressed. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so good that I've been aff afflicted. Like all that stuff. And then the Holy Spirit, like I even reached out to Brother Andy and uh, we're going over some dialogue and stuff like that. Get into the word because he's a, a student of the word and I love that. And we're going through affliction. He's sending me passages back and forth, back and forth. And I'm just like, and he called me even Friday night about like leading me some more notes and stuff regarding affliction. And I just had the like, hey, Andy, uh, let me tell you guys, you know the Holy Spirit has a sense of humor, right? And he's like, yeah, what's going on? I go, well, the Holy Spirit changed my message, and I got to be obedient. What does God bless? God blesses obedience. And I felt like what he was doing, I was going to talk about affliction. Do you guys realize what affliction is? In the book of Psalms 119, 71, it says, it was good for me that I was afflicted. It was good for me, and that was, that's what I was going to talk about. But again, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about love. But my brothers and my sisters, come on, somebody. I, had, I, uh, I told Brother Andy, I'm going to tell you guys this right now. We have a bridge softball team. Again, we, got, we know who we are in Christ, right? So this is, um, so we have a bridge softball team, right? And, we, and I said, hey, my brother, but we're still going to be talking about affliction. But even more than that, if you want to see affliction, just show up to Tuesday night games. <laughs> Oh, my brothers and my sisters, we've been getting slaughtered. Talk about affliction. We've been getting afflicted, right? That's what affliction. But come on, somebody, about softball, about baseball. I was going to go over there in the Holy Spirit, and I felt like the Holy Spirit telling me this. And again, I know baseball in and out, right? And again, us getting smashed on and beat up and pounced on and, and all that stuff. I'm going to be honest. You know what we need to do? We need to go back to the basic fundamentals. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that went over your gut. The basic fundamentals. Right? There's good stock. Come on. Somebody. And I felt that we have so many people coming in here, new believers, new that. But even if I want to talk about affliction, it may be going over some people's heads where they don't even know what affliction is. But I got to go back, I got to be obedient and go back to the simple fundamentals of what is love. What is love? We throw that word around. It's like I, I was even doing a, a word study as well. The word affliction comes up in the Bible about a little over 680 times the word affliction. You know how many times the word love comes up in the Bible? Over 1,100 times in the Bible it talks about the word love. And here we are, always saying love, love. What is love? Let me ask you the question right now. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to tell you guys like this. Every message that I preach up here, I don't just preach to you guys. This goes to the youth as well. So your youth, that your children that are here, you go and ask them what love is. And I wish I could do it like I them. And I'm going to point out to my brothers and my sisters. And you tell me, what is love? What's love? Yes, God is love, but what does love do? 
What does love do? We throw that word around. Oh, I love these. Sh- oh, I love them. Sh- I love your shoes. I, I love pizza. I love that. I love. We throw that word around. But yet, do you know what that word means? Oh, man, I want to go there just to see where you guys are. Like, again, I don't want to give you guys nothing. Like, if we don't know, again, we cannot give away what we do not have. If you don't have an encounter with Jesus of what love is, and that's what I told every single one of you guys, for you guys that came here a few minutes late, come on, somebody in Jesus' name, I love you guys. Here's what I opened up with. You know what the most boringest thing on planet Earth is, in my opinion? Is religion. Is religion. Oh, my goodness. They were, come on, somebody. Right? Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. It's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. But if you don't have the, like, if you have not had that revelation of who Jesus is or of who love is, if you don't have it, how could you give it away? You know how many broken homes that I minister to? We have, young, we have uh, small groups in our youth every Wednesday and groups of eight, and I ask them, how many of you guys in here come from broken homes? Out of six out of eight of them, six of them raise their hand that their mom and dad are not living together or they're separated. And that right there just grieves my heart. Why? Because I know that that's not the heart of the Father. God is. And the reason why, I'm going to tell you guys right now, my brothers and my sisters, the reason why those marriages and, and houses are falling apart, because there's no love. There's no love. They don't know the true definition of what love is. And that's why I even encourage, like again, I, I literally, you know how this, it's a sovereignty of the Lord. Two of my adult leaders and two young adults that I minister to, I ask them a the simple question. What is love? What is love? Okay, what does love do? And what does love not do? I ask you guys the same question right now. Do you know what love is? Yes, God is love. But what does love do? And what does love not do? Can you guys answer that question right now with everything inside of you? Because I know we throw that word around, love. But if you haven't had a revelation of what the word means, it's not the worldly love, it's the godly love. That's what we're talking about. Oh, man, I wish I could do a raise of hands and you guys, I could point you guys out right now and you tell me right now. Let's do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be hundred percent on. I had all the youth were here and I'm telling you, I'm going really chill with you guys. And you know what the young adults told me? You better go as hard as they might use did to us. You know what the word came out of their mouth, out of the young generation? You know what they said? You convicted us. Come on, somebody. Do you know that's what the Holy Spirit does? I'm not here to condemn any of you guys, but it's to convict you guys of what true love is. So I'm going to ask you again, what is love? What does love, okay, what does love do? Huh? Love gives, okay. What does love do? What does love do? Love is what? Woo, love is patient. Love is what? Oh, love is kind. Love is what? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, here's what, okay, I, I can't, on um, time-wise, I wish I could be here and just, oh, I want to see where you guys, even people who come, oh, come up, even people who've been coming and, start, and knowing the Lord for 25, 30 years, come on, somebody, what is love? What is love? Oh, it's not how you feel, I'm going to tell you right now, love is an action. Love is an action. Love's a sacrifice. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love reju- rejoices in the truth. Love always protects. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. And love never fails. Never fails. That's why I don't like, again, I'll be honest, I'm going raw like you. I'm going to tell you guys like this. There's a song that we sing and stuff like that where it says, I'm not, not, I'm just telling you guys, I'm a worse person. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, so I realize what comes out of my mouth. There's a song that says, hey, you haven't failed me yet. 
you haven't failed me yet. And I'm like, I grieve my spirit. And I'm just like, I don't like that song. And people are like, what are you talking? I just don't like this song. Could you see that? It says, it hasn't failed me yet. It says he hasn't failed me yet. What are you talking about? No, I, you haven't failed me yet. Pastor Fred, yes, he's failed me. Pat, right? <laughs> right? Hey, and if I haven't failed you yet, guess what? Pastor Carmelo's going to let you down. I haven't failed you yet, but God will never fail you. Why? Because love never fails. Love keeps no record of wrong. Love doesn't boast. Love doesn't envy. Oh, my goodness. That's love. That's love. Love. That's why I say when they see you, do they want what you have? Do they want what you have? I don't want religion. Like I said, I'll go, I don't want religion. I've had an encounter with the blood of Jesus. Those who've been forgiven much, loves much. But I'm going to tell you guys, a, a lot of people, I was having a conversation with Andy, and I hear a lot. You know what so many people tell me? Hey, Brother Carmelo, I don't have your testimony. I was never in the gang. I never did this. I never did that. And I say, you know what? And let me tell you, every single one of you guys who see me like this, I am the way I'm right now. Yes, I was a gang member. Yes, I was a drug addict. Yes, and I was an alcoholic. Yes, yes, yes. But all those things, you know who was never any one of those things? Jesus was no gang member. Jesus was no alcoholic. Jesus was no d drug addict. So what, don't use that as an excuse is what I'm telling you guys. If you guys apply, come on somebody, if, it's a choice. What does if mean? If you apply the blood of Jesus to your life, and realize that every single one of your sins that you deserve to be on that cross, for I said one drop of blood and your life will never be the same. I've happened to have like, wait, Jesus, you forgive me? You love, wait, you love me? Of all the people I hurt? Of all the stuff I did? Yes, Father, I forgive you, but we cannot give away what we don't receive. I've been forgiven much through love and now I can love much. But have you guys, you guys don't not need to have that radical testimony. All you got to do is apply that blood of Jesus to your life, and it will never be the same. You know what, you guys, I'm, you guys got to live your life upon a cross. A cross. Our life needs to be a cross, right? This is right. We got to receive as Abba, as our Father, up and down. We're like this, right? And every other relationship like this would be amazing. Our life needs to be lived on a cross. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, the very first thing you need to do is deny yourself. Why? Because it's all about you. And it's all about you. And it's all about you. They offended me. They hurt you. How's that working out for you? He says, deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Follow me. I'm just coming from overflow. So that was all. Not a part of my. Uh, um, okay, what does love? Okay, so now let's break these down really quick because we're. Uh... All right, so where it does say. What love does, here's what love, I read all these things, what love does, love is patient, oh, love is kind, love rejoices with the truth, always protects, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. What does love not do? Envy, boast, it's not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, I'm going to throw in offended, we're going to get there, um, and it keeps no records of wrong, and it does not delight in the evil. So where do you guys want to start? Come on, somebody. <laughs> on that list, where do you guys want to start? Woo! Just to let you guys know, that is in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, 4 through 8, all righty? So let's go in verse 4. Love is patient. Love is patient. What does that mean to be patient? It's like being long-spirited. So many people right now, even, again, I'm a, a youth pastor, seeing young adults, junior high, high schoolers and stuff, you know what? They want everything right now. They don't want to wait. They don't want to work for nothing. They don't want to persevere. Right? Even us, like again, even for me, like uh, what the Lord has put on my life. Like you want this? Come on, somebody. That's why I was going to talk about affliction. This brother up here that you seeing, been afflicted. But I could say, like it says in passage of Psalms 119, it was good for me. That I was afflicted. Come on, somebody. Psalms 119. Read your Bible. Longest chapter in Scripture. Uh, right? Lo right? Love is patient. Long-spirited. 
but it was good for me that I was afflicted. And because of that is why I could say, I can't do this. I can't be a father. I can't be a husband. I definitely can't be a youth pastor. But I know I could do all things through you, Christ, who gives me strength. That's the only reason why I could do what I'm doing. And that's the reason I'm not going to walk around boastful, prideful. Why? It's because I've been afflicted. Man, you, you'll see, I, I know it. You'll see around, you'll walk around people. And you'll see the gentleness. You'll see the humility. You'll see the meekness. It's not weakness, it's meekness. Strength under control. I know who I am. I think about this. Let me, let me tell you, let me give you an analogy real quick of what meekness is, right? Is about, I use this analogy with brothers as well. You know how like out in the world, there's a guy being all loud and like, oh, I'm gonna go beat that guy up. I'm gonna do all this. He's the loudest guy in there, right? But he's like, but then you, come on somebody, but then you see a guy in the back, just right there, just chilling, like a five foot four mix. No, I'm just kidding, right? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Five foot seven. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but he's just right there, just chilling, scoping things out. Let them talk. Let them do what they want to do. But when it's time to go, it's time to go. That's meekness. I know who I am. I know what I could do. But do you know how you do? You don't overcome evil with evil. You overcome evil with good, with love. With love. But how could you do it if you don't know what it is? We've got to go back to the basic fundamentals. Again, out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. I could be around brothers and sisters. Man, and you'll know them just by them speaking. If they're spending time with the Lord. Again, I truly believe the evidence that you're a true believer is the joy of the Lord that is on your life. Man, not happiness. Happiness is temporary. Happiness, you'll get a taco right now. You'll get some happiness. <laughs> but the joy of the Lord, my brothers and my sisters, comes from the Lord. Is my strength. Amen. So again, we want this right now. Be patient. How patient is the Lord with you guys? Really? How patient is the Lord with you guys right now? He says, come to me, man. How's that working for you in your life? How's that partying? How's that gossiping? How's that bitterness? How's that anxiety? How's those thoughts of suicide? Come to me. Deny yourself. How's that working for you? I drink at a dry cusp my whole life until I took one drink of Jesus. I took one drink and I've never thirst. I searched the world. What are you searching for right now, my brothers and my sisters? What are you searching for? If his name is not Jesus, everything else pacifies, Jesus satisfies. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, that's, love is kind. Love is kind. Love is gentle. My amazing, beautiful wife right here that's in the front row, she's so kind. She allowed me even this Friday, she was so kind to let me use her car. And she was also so kind to live it. Like as soon as I got in it, there was a big old bright E on it. On the gas gauge. I'm like, I don't know if she thinks that means extra. <laughs> it doesn't, babe. Just let you know. E doesn't stand for extra. But let me be so kind and fill her up her gas tank. How could you be kind? Hey, these are actions we talk about. How could you be kind today? How could you be gentle? How could you bless somebody right now with all this darkness, with all this chaos that's going on in the world right now? How could you be kind? How could you be patient? <clears throat> okay, here we go. You guys want to start from what love does not do. Love does not envy. Again, what I talked about already, already went there. Be careful what you ask for. You see somebody, you see me up here in the pulpit, you see mans of God on the pulpit, oh, I want that, I want, let me tell you guys right now, this is what I tell every single one of you guys, don't seek no position, seek his presence. Not one time in my life have I ever said, pastor, let me be a youth pastor, let me do this, let me do this. You know what I was doing? I was dwelling with my father in a secret place. 
I was in his presence. Because if you guys, that's what I'm saying, be aware of what you guys ask for. Because if you guys want this, oh, I could speak, I could do all, then come on up here, my brothers. Come and do this. Be careful what you guys ask for, what you're envy of right now. It says love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 to 10 says, I love this. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool. This is the Apostle Paul. Oh, my gosh, I love that guy. I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than it is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, come on somebody, this is Jesus, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, because of that, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sakes, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Boast in our weaknesses. That's what love does not do. It's all about I, oh, I, oh, oh I'm going to go there. You, I hear, again, I'm always hearing some people talk, right? Oh, I, they want to go and ask you their whole resume. I didn't even ask you. Can we get a hello? You're a CEO, you're this. I, I, I'm just like, it's my spirit, I'm checking. But again, you know where that comes from? And I know this, it's a lack of identity. They're trying to get their identity from their position, from where they're at. Our identity needs to come from the Lord. I wish, let's continue. Right, there's so much more, but uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 13, 5. What love does not do, it does not dishonor other. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily anger. It keeps no record of wrong. It does not dishonor others. I'm going to be honest with you guys, my brothers and my sisters. Again, so many stuff constantly is getting thrown my way. Constantly, right? You see me and you're thinking like, I, I, you guys get the false narrative at times where I don't go through things. Why? I just don't wear them on my sleeve. Because I know who I am. I know that hurting people hurt people. So when people throw stuff at me, insults at me, first thing I do is I get on my knees and say, Lord, is this true? Like I, I go to the Lord and then I allow him to be my defender. You know how I don't fight back. I don't even retaliate because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Right? What side are you on of that? Are you a, a receiver of that stuff? Or they didn't, do you keep all the records of wrong? We're going to go to it right now. Love keeps no record of wrong. Jesus throws all of your guys' sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Yet brothers and sisters and even the church religious people, oh, look what brother Fred did. Look what brother Jared did. Look what brother Christian, right? Right? But I love you. Because what does love do? Love protects. Love protects. Love covers a multiple of sin. Apply that blood of Jesus to your guys' life. Allow him to be your defender. Allow him to be your fortress. Allow him to be your refuge. It is not easily angered or offended. That's, how many of you guys in here are easily offended? That's what happens. Come on, somebody. I, I felt that even right now. Right? How easily we're angered. Love does, it's not easily angered. What that's telling me is you have not been perfected in love. That's why you're easily angered and you're easily offended. That's why it's easy for us to go to, go to in and out of different churches. That's why I say, I don't go to church, my brothers and my sisters. I am the church. 
When I go home, when I go to my workplace, wherever I go, I am the church. And Jesus said he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail. I don't go to church. I am the church. Luke 9, 23 says, then whoever, <clears throat> this is Jesus talking, then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to be my follower, they first must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. That word's daily. I talked about it ahead of time. I got ahead of myself. But the second time is coming up and I think it's very intentional. If you're easily angered, come on somebody. When you see something happen to you or someone says a word or the social media or whatever happens to you guys or you don't hear something from the pulpit or whatever, are you easily offended? And then you want to go and tell everybody what they did? Because now you guys need followers? I love you guys. I know what that word means. I don't throw it around. If I didn't, like I even tell my children, God disciplines those who he loves. I even tell my children, I even tell my children, I love you. That's why I'm not allowing you to go do this. Even when they're growing up, a teenager, oh, but everyone else does this. Everyone else is partying. Everyone else is drinking. Everyone else, well, that's everyone else. I'm not everyone else. The Lord has entrusted you with me. I love you. I love you. I've been there. I've done that. I love you. I'm going to tell you, there's a landmine that you're walking through right now. I tell every single one of you guys, there's landmines in your guys' life right now. And I'm telling you guys to protect you guys, to watch out for them. But if you guys don't know what the Word of God says, the devil will tell you all day long. That's why I say, get in your guys' Word so the Word could get in you. If it's a choice. The, if you don't get in the Word, the Word's not going to get in you. This is the power source. But if you never apply this to your life, it does nothing. That's religion. We're not created for religion. We are created for a relationship with fellowship. Love keeps no record of wrong. Luke, again, no record of wrongs. How many wrongs have we all done in this place? For we've all sinned and fallen short. We've all sinned. No one in here is perfect until we see Jesus face to face. But all of your sins are forgiven if you receive that sacrifice that was given for every single one of you guys. In Luke twenty two thirty four, 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. So I'm not justifying what you guys been through in your guys' life. When your mother, your fathers, or someone disowned you, or gossiped about you, or whatever circumstance you guys been through, it's real. But I'm telling you guys, forgive them. For they know not what they're doing. Jesus literally said it from the cross. And that's what I'm talking about on how I can live up here right now is because I truly have had a revelation that he's forgiven me. Have you had that revelation? Or are you still walking in unforgiveness? The last passage I, I preached on was Psalms 91 of where are you dwelling at? Are you dwelling in unforgiveness? Are you dwelling in bitterness? Are you dwelling in resentment? Are you dwelling in gossip? Or are you dwelling in this presence where there's a fullness of joy? Again, forgive them for they know not what they do. But I'm going to tell every single one of you guys, my brothers and my sisters, you guys that are easily angered and easily offended, it's not any of them. It's you. You got to know who you are. Because hurting people hurt people. I love how quiet it is. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. It goes deep. Holy Spirit goes deep. Right? Hear what I just said right now. The people that offended you, that you're allowing to offend you, it's not them. It's you. Take ownership of that. Take ownership of that. 
you got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. But if you don't know who you are, you're going to believe the lies that our people are speaking over you. And it's the truth that sets you free. I believed my lies my whole life. Man, I want to get up and leap right now. Until the truth came in here and set me free. You know how calm and tame I'm being? You know how much of a fire I have inside of me right now? But just for the sake of you brothers and my sisters, I just want to go in there and be like, I just want to cut. I'm just going to be like a master. Just, uh, I, I love you. It's a sword. Of, uh, it's the word of God oozing in you guys. Going through all that bitterness. That what I got to press through through. What I got to fight through. What I got to get through to press through. Go to that heart. That heart and heart. What I got to press. I recognize the spiritual warfare that I'm dealing with. I recognize that. I'm not going to just say words. I want to speak what the Holy Spirit has me speak to every single one of you guys. Because it's the truth that sets you guys free. Jesus is the truth. He's the way. And he is the life. He's not a way. He's the way. He's not a truth. He's the truth. He's not a life. He's the life. Anything outside of Jesus is dead. Don't try to put, don't, oh, don't try to put your life in dead things. Don't put your life in dead things. False gods. When I was growing up, come on somebody. My false god, I used to worship. I used to worship sports teams. Worship them. Every Sundays, I'd be there worshiping. Come on somebody. And I know I see some of you guys who say you don't worship. But let your sports team get on. But you guys don't worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords of what he did for your guys' life. The blood that he spilled for you is the reason on the way we can walk around in forgiveness, in love, in patience, in self-control, in all those things. It's love. Verse 6, 1 Corinthians 13, 6. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. Again, what I just told you, John 14, 6. For you guys, I'm, I'm reading Bible, I'm telling you, you got John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 8, 32 says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Love never fails. Love is a sacrifice, my brothers and my sisters. Jesus, when he was about to go to the cross, he went out and prayed in Luke twenty two forty one 41 through 42. It says, and he was withdrawn from then about a stone's throw away, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was telling his Father, if there's some other way, if there's some other way that I don't have to go to the cross, but nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. God's will was still to send his son to be a living sacrifice to, for every single one of us that sin had a cost and sin led to death. That's the reason why Jesus went to the cross for every single one of your guys' sins and my sins poured out his blood. That was love. Love is a sacrifice. That's love. That's love. But yet we throw this word around. I love, I love. Boyfriend and girlfriends, I love. You don't know what that word means. You don't know what that word means. That's what grieves my soul. Even us in here, do you know what? Say that word love. Don't say you love me if you hold records of all my wrongs. Love never fails. Love rejoices in the truth. Love protects. (sighs) 
You guys had enough yet? Let's, man, you guys, let's stand. I'm going to end with 1 John chapter 4, 7 through 19. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who has been born of God and knows God, whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his, his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him. And he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Verse 17, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. What? There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If you're in here right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in here right now, and you've seen that this word, I've said that word multiple, multiple times, but I really never had this revelation of what that word love meant. But I'm saying right now, I want to receive that love. I want to acknowledge you as the God of my life for that sacrifice that you went to the cross for me, for all of my sins. But I haven't truly received that love. But right now, in this moment, I want all of your consuming love the way I walked in here right now. I'm not going to walk out the same. I can't even sleep at night. I walk in anxiety. I walk in depression. I walk in fear. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear. If it has a name, it has to bow down to the name of Jesus. Jesus is love. Depression has to bow down. Anxiety has to bow down. Divorce has to bow down. But that's only if you receive and you acknowledge Jesus of what he did for you and all of your guys' sins. And if you're in here right now and you're saying, I want to receive that love right now. It's the love of the Father where he holds no records wrong of me, where he protects me, where he looks out for me. If that's you in here right now, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to raise your hand. Put your hand up. Praise God. I see your guys' hands. Praise God. Praise God. You guys with your guys' hands up, again, acknowledge him. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. We're going to pray. Then we're going to eat some tacos. And we're going to love on one another. Come on. Come on. He loves you. 
He loves you. Your guys, I'm going to tell you guys right now, like I told the youth right now. Right now, your guys' palms are sweating and your hearts are pounding right now. That's the Holy Spirit. If that's you in here right now, I want you to come on up and acknowledge the Father, the love of the Father. Come on up here. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Prayer team, if I could get you guys up here. You guys as a posture to receive or to pray together. And you guys will open your guys' hands like this and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for being a living sacrifice, for going to the cross for all of my sins. You went to the cross for love. You endured it for the joy that was set before you which was me. Right now, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I repent. I want to follow you. Teach me. Teach me how to love. Teach me how to follow you. Teach me how to serve you. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, for every single one of my brothers and my sisters who came up here and publicly acknowledged, Father God, that they want to have the true love, the true revelation of what love is, Father God. Love is an action, and they demonstrated it today with they acknowledge you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So, Father God, right now, I just thank you, Father God. I bless every single one of my brothers and my sisters, Father God, who came up here right now, Father God. It didn't need to be no fiery message, Father God. I, I just thank you, but it pierced through them, Father God. You knew who this message was for, Father God. It's for your, my brothers and my sisters that were right here that acknowledge you knew of what true love is. So, Father God, right now, I bless them right now, and I plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, over every single one of my brothers and my sisters right now, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Every time that they look at themselves in the mirror, Father God, may they see themselves, Father God, the way that you see them, that they're loved, that they're chosen, that they're called, that they're anointed, but above all things, that they're sons and daughters of kings. So we just love and praise you in Jesus' name. Every said? Amen, amen. Love you guys. If you guys need prayer, come on up. If not, go outside and love one another. And let's eat some tacos in Jesus' name.